Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leap Project. I'm your host, Rex Baer, and we have guest Betsy Lewis with us. She is the author of several incredible books on the ET phenomenon, and one coming out here very shortly called Ancient Serpent Gods, the Alien Connection to Reptilian Dinosaurs will actually be discussed here today first, and that's coming out here very soon. If you'd like to know more about Betsy and her books, make sure to go to BetsyLewis.com. Betsy, hey, thanks a lot for joining us here at The Leak Project. How the heck are oh, you? Thank- well, I'm great. How are you, Rex? Great to be on your show again. Thank you. Absolutely. I know we spoke a couple years ago when I was with uh, another outfit, and this right. is, it's just great to have you here. And when we spoke before, you said some things that just blew my mind and our listeners... Oh as well. So this is going to be fantastic. I know you've had some personal experiences and the fact that you put together several really good books. I just can't wait to hear about the Serpent God connection. And one thing I just wanted to say real quick before we get to know a little bit about you as far as the audience that hasn't heard much about you before is I've wondered in the past about dinosaurs and the reptilians that we hear about so much. I thought to myself, could they have always been here like a, a certain size reptilian and then the dinosaurs mainly died off but they were a part of the same family line did they evolve were they manipulated but there's mm-hmm. just been this weird thing i've been trying to connect for so many years so tell us a little bit about yourself and then let's jump into the ancient serpent gods okay um well i've had lots of paranormal experiences since i was eight months old a ufo experience uh, when i was eight months old with my parents on a lonely dark road in northern idaho And um, they were buzzed by a UFO, may have been abducted because we lost um, two hours in time that couldn't be accounted for. I have had a UFO experience when I was in first grade and I was chased home by a UFO, a huge giant silvery disc. I have um, had many um, psychic and uh, precognitive uh, visions of the future, um, which have come true. Um, I have had connections with the other side. I've just had many, many things happen. And I I don't know why. I I think I may have inherited all that from my mother, who was very intuitive and could actually astral project. I wish I could do that. (laughs) But um, I haven't been able to do that. But she was amazing. You know, I actually had an out-of-body experience the first time when I wasn't even trying to. I was just falling asleep, but I was mentally still awake. And Mm -hmm. when I popped out of my body, it scared me so bad. I woke myself up really quick, and then I did it again, and it freaked me out again. So I woke myself back up. And (laughs) ever since then, I've been fascinated with it, and I've researched it, studied it. I've done my best to practice certain exercises to help boost those abilities. And Mm -hmm. it's incredible. I mean, if you ever have that experience, I would definitely say there's nothing like it. It's incredible. I had, I think, an experience like that when I was 13, and it happened so fast, kind of like you said, you were just in your body, and then suddenly, you know, you're up looking down at your body, and it happened so quickly, but I've never had anything happen since then. Yeah, it's pretty intense. It wasn't something Mm -hmm. that I was trying for the first time. Now, when you said you've made contact with the other side, what do you mean by that? Well, um, I have had um, family members who have passed on who contact me all the time, either through dreams or um, my sister who passed away in 2003 in Argentina has been doing all kinds of things. She, he's, she's a little bit mischievous. Uh, she likes to do turn off radios. She um, has um, actually started my alarm on my car. Uh, she set it off one day. Um, she has um, caused utensils to elevate in our kitchen. And uh, she's kind of sent little messages with uh, certain songs that she, um, when she turns off the radio, I know it's her. So it's pretty incredible. Um, and I've had dreams about her visiting. So there's just been some amazing things, so that I know um, are true that she's here and watching over us. Have you ever seen a reptilian? No, but I have friends that have shapeshifters, actually, that, you know, people that their eyes actually become slit and uh, pretty intense. Yeah, Yeah, let's talk about that. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, uh, like you, I've always thought, you know, everybody is on this role about ancient aliens, right, or ancient astronauts. And that started with probably Eric Von Donneken's chair chariots of the gods in 1968 but um you know there's it seems like every author out there in tv documentaries it's all about ancient aliens right and i thought well you know how can we say that it's really ancient aliens that helped us build these megalithic 
structures around the world and and account for everything that is, you know, the pyramids, the great pyramids. There's just too many things that don't make sense. And, and one thing I found, which, you know, there's just this pattern, there's this connection that there are cultures, ancient cultures all around the world that have worshipped serpent gods since, you know, eons ago. Uh, it's even found in the Bible with um, Adam and Eve. So there's something to that. And, you know, we know the lowly, you know, snake. Why would they want to worship a snake? You know, obviously, I think that has something to do with dinosaurs. And, and there's some really interesting things that I found about the dinosaur and other theories that people have had about the dinosaur didn't actually die out. And that perhaps a certain species of dinosaur actually survived the extinction event 65 million years ago which, you know, I think is pretty interesting, isn't it? So do you think they went inside the earth or had some way to live out the event that killed most of the dinosaurs? Or I think so. Um, they, had, they were on the earth, let's say, between 150 to 185 million years. That's a long time to evolve <laughs> and become super intelligent. And the one thing that's really interesting is that paleontologists used to believe they were slow moving, <clears throat> excuse me, slow moving, they were unintelligent, you know, they um, didn't, um, you know, they were cold blooded, but now they're thinking that maybe they were warm blooded, maybe some of them were mammals, and they were very intelligent. So, yeah, I think they could have survived and gone underground. And that could maybe account for what we um, hear about all these alien abductions with reptilians and, and how they seem to go underground. Some people feel that they've been taken to an underground base or somewhere in the ocean, some kind of base. And, and you know about the one that they found off of Malibu. We don't know if that's really a, an alien base or what it is off the coast of Malibu. Oh, I haven't even heard of that. Oh, you haven't? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, they have uh, satellite images of it. It's massive, and there's columns in front. <laughs> and I've heard of so many um, UFOs that are actually diving into the ocean. Um, L.A. is probably one of the biggest hotspots for UFOs. Wow, L.A. I, mean, I had never heard I of that. I would think it would have been New Mexico. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, it, it, L.A. is pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Nice. I know many people that have seen them there. And, um, and of course, know who Ann Druffel is that did a lot of research um, and has written several books about alien abductions that um, she interviewed several people that were abducted in the Tahunga Canyon area. Okay. It started out in the 50s. Yeah. So pretty amazing. Now, and I believe that there is something out there that, you know, they've been here. Well, why would we think that all these aliens visiting us, you know, they came from maybe light years away would stop and, and want to help us when maybe they've been here all along. Instead of extraterrestrial, they're terrestrial beings. And they were the ones that um, helped us. Maybe they actually created us uh, from monkey DNA. Of course, there's a lot of differences with our DNA and monkeys. Not that, you know, most of our chromosomes match, but there could be a lot more than that, which is kind of interesting. So do you feel that these ancient serpent gods or these dinosaur reptilians had an influence on the manipulation of humans or the genetic mm -hmm. interference, I guess? Oh, I do. I do. And, you know, there's the stories of the Akanaki which some believe are reptilians. Um, that goes back to Zachariah Zitchin, who talked about the Sumerians, who talked about the Anunnaki from Nibiru and, and um, how they came to Earth. And they may have had some manipulation in our DNA, but I think we have been manipulated. There, there's nothing, there is no other being like us. That We're so different from all the animals on earth um, we have a split personality which is called schizophrenia no other animal has it not even monkeys um, there's just amazing things that i found that uh, you know we, there are so many of us out there we're different colors um, different uh, body types um, just um, so many things um, with our our looks and everything and we're just so different all the different cultures but you know we can still mate with each other but we certainly couldn't go mate with an a gorilla or a monkey that would be impossible so um the truth is that i believe it's it, 
let's see, the large monkeys have 24 chromosomes and we have only 23, which is kind of interesting. But there's just a lot of things. You know, I just think the story of evolution is so askew that um, they have it all wrong. You know, the creationist, I think we've been on Earth for millions of years, not just a few thousand years, and we just suddenly became intelligent <laughs> out of the clear blue. It just doesn't make sense. There, there's all these missing pieces, Rex, that I think, you know, just can't be explained with evolution and what we've been taught. It, it never did make sense to me. <laughs> Now, oh, it's absolutely, there's too many variables and so much missing that your mind yeah. is looking for options and alternatives, and there's just so few to choose from. And the ones that you do choose from can be more incredible than science fiction, yet oftentimes reality is stranger than fiction. So, I mean, who knows? I mean, that's why I'm so agnostic on everything now. I used to think I had yeah. all the answers, and now I'm just like, well, that looks great. That could be, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, we could be in yeah. some matrix right now where these – you know, extraterrestrials are manipulating our minds by some type of subliminal <laughs> vibrational frequency. I've just, I've heard it all now and talking to I'm people. Sure. Yeah. And talking to people like you though, Betsy, where you've actually had experiences and encounters, that's really something to take to the bank. It's not like you heard from somebody's uncle at a diner 17 years ago about Billy Bob, you know, I mean, you've lived through a lot of these experiences and, <laughs> right. and, and been there. So tell us some more yeah. about these serpents and archaeology or data that many people okay. haven't had access to? Okay. Well, um, you know, I, I found a book a few years ago by, um, uh, his name is uh, Barclay, and he's from the UK. He's um, pretty amazing. He uh, wrote a book about aliens, and uh, it's uh, David Barclay. I think that's from um, 1994. But anyway, he came up with um, some amazing things about aliens. Um, and he believed, too, that the dinosaur didn't die like we've been told and that um, they have had a lot to do with our genetic tampering. And, I, you know, I start, I've been thinking that for a long time, and I think he's the only one that's ever talked about that, as far as I know. But everything that he starts talking about and, you know, what I start finding too is just all these stories about serpents and and um, the, like the Hopi Indians maintain that their ancestors didn't arrive from the north, uh, but instead climbed on the surface from the underworld. Now there's lots of legends like that. Um, there are dragon stories all around the world, the Chinese, the Japanese, um, the Germans, the Egyptians, um, all had serpents. And um, what's really amazing is, um, you know, we, we talk about human, you know, existence. There are, uh, there are these um, 11,000, maybe more of them, of these stones that were found in Peru. Do you know about them called the Ica stones? Are those the ones that have pictures or drawings of dinosaurs yes. and such? Yes, yes. Well, they were originally found in the 1500s and um, later came to... Um, be dis rediscovered again in the 60s. But what's amazing about these Ica stones from Peru is that they have carvings that are so amazing on there. It, it shows um, dinosaurs, uh, humans riding dinosaurs and trying to kill them. It shows dinosaurs eating humans. It shows dinosaurs giving birth, live birth, to baby dinosaurs and um, actually where they're suckling um, like mammals, you know, because we've always been told that they're reptilians, and um, they only drink blood. They do, <laughs> and um, just um, that the Peruvians, the the Incas, had um, telescopes. They were operating on the brain. They um, transfusions, um, heart transplants. It looks like um, there's just incredible things. So if humans go back to when the dinosaur was around, which was what 65 million years ago th there's something going on there you know how can we just possibly think that we just showed up on the evolutionary path just uh, about 200,000 years ago you know as modern man it's it doesn't make sense to me there's just it's like a piece of cheese there's too many holes in it <laughs> right so basically instead of the reptilians coming here and m doing their manipulative Mm -hmm. work you feel that they've always been here and that maybe we are the ones that uh aren't from this planet 
Well, I, th I think we could have been from this planet, but I think that maybe they had taken, I think they're master geneticists and <clears throat> they know how to um, create, you know, beings. And I think they created us perhaps by the, maybe the ape that was evolving at the time and put different DNA in us to create modern man. So th that's one hypothesis. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but um, you know, if they were the Akanaki and came here millions of years ago, that could explain some of them stayed, some of them left. Um, that might explain it too. But I still think that there is that reptilian presence and we've always known about it. And certainly, you know, the serpents tempting Eve in the Bible. Um, she was the one that wanted to know, you know, the about knowledge. So she ate of the, the apple. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I've also read the Gnostic texts that talk about these archons and the serpent actually trying to help Eve. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Do yeah, exactly. Do you think Go these ahead. archons could actually be um, these reptilians that made it through mm -hmm. this evolution? I think so. I think so, yeah. And, you, you know, another thing that kind of gets me is that <clears throat> I think maybe the serpent uh, became Satan, what we call the devil, you know, with the tail. You know, reptilians have tails and uh, certainly demons from the underworld. And I think that's probably where the, the stories and the legends come from. Okay. But, but, you know, one of the strangest stories goes back to Dulce, New, Me New Mexico with Phil Snyder. And um, his story about the uh, gray reptilians underneath this uh, base and um, how there was a firefight between the military and these beings that were down there. So I think they exist all over the world. I think there is underground areas. We know there's caverns all over the world. And I really, really believe that a lot of these noises that we're hearing under, you know, the booms that are being heard all around the world are something they're doing underneath the ground. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that news article that came out from 1924, the L.A. Times, I think it was, yes. where these explorers found these huge underground catacombs? Mm-hmm. Yeah, California has the biggest caverns all over the, wor the world, I think. Um, you know, they're just amazing. And, uh, you know, I know stories of the Mojave where people have been abducted, but there's caverns out there everywhere. And, I, you know, I'm sure the military is aware of that and what's going on out there. They've known about it for a long time. Some of these areas, um, I interviewed Ron Felber. I don't know if you've had a chance to interview him about the Mojave incident. No, it sounds like a, a, a great show, though. <laughs> Yeah, um, the couple that were abducted by aliens, they were out there, the husband liked to hunt in 1989, and, and they went out there, they were just going to take a little weekend, and they went to the one area to find a, a place to camp, and it was all filled up, which was kind of unusual for this weekend, because there was nothing special going on. So they kept driving, and they went to this canyon where he was familiar with, and they decided to camp out there. And... As it was getting dark, they noticed these lights over the mountains. And all of a sudden, they saw like hundreds of lights falling. And suddenly, these lights start coming at them. And they can see their eyes, their glowing red eyes coming at them. You know, they're sitting by their campfire. And they jump in the back of their pickup. They just had a little camper shell on there. And it, they were held for like eight hours by three different types of beings. Uh, the greys, um, even an angel came to them. And I think that might have been actually downloading their memories because they're very religious people. And uh, so it was an amazing story. But um, they were regressed. And some of the things that they were told were just amazing about who they are and why they're here. Pretty interesting. But what gets me is they were taken up on a mothership. I mean, huge, gigantic. I mean, it co covered uh, the sky. And where was the military? You know, the military always show up, right? And there's so many military bases out in the Mojave Desert, right? That there was nothing. They, huh. you know, there was no military around. So how could that be? Because they always show up. They always do. And it seems like with their, you know, unmarked helicopters or their helicopters right after somebody had a major UFO incident. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, maybe a lot of times people feel that they're involved with the abductions. So have you 
Now, do you remember seeing these beans when you yourself have had experiences with them? I was regressed by Andruffel in the 80s. Both my mother and I were uh, actually regressed by her. And I remembered being taken up, actually beamed aboard, you know, like a lot of people, actually going through the top of the roof of our car. But I was eight months old. So, you know, wh what can we really remember? You know, I've read so many books on UFOs and I've always been interested. I don't know if that was, you know, if my memory was tainted because of that. But my mother told, you know, that they heard this huge, just enormous boom, um, this roar that just continued when they were driving down the road and they thought a plane was going to crash on them. And my father supposedly pulled off to the side of the road. They jumped out, looked around. There was nothing in the sky. But I think something happened that they were actually in some kind of state, suspended state, um, where they didn't remember that. But according to my uncle, who remembered the story so well, he said it reminded him of the Betty and Barney Hill case because they lost two hours in time. They were driving from northern Idaho to southern Idaho to visit my family. And, uh, you know, where did those two hours go that they couldn't account for? So that's still a mystery in the family. Jeez. You know, and you talked earlier, too, about the mantis type, the insectoids. Some people think that they're kind of on the upper echelon of the ETs, tell the other mm -hmm. ones what to do in the hierarchy. The research that you've done, do you feel the same way, or do you think that the reptilians are above them? Or You know, that, that's a really good question, Rex. You know, I, according to so many, there, there's like 18 species maybe of aliens that are visiting us, and I don't think that even includes the reptilians. I think there are so many visiting us. Um, and it, it's really hard to know. I know that um, John Lear, who has actually been on coast to coast, he was on with Art Bell, said that there were 18 species of aliens watching us. He said some are good and some are hostile, but some are indifferent. You know, they think of us as lab rats. And he said that they know that the greys are uh, cybernetic organisms or glorified, glorified, I guess, glorified robots, robots. I can, can't say it, robots. You will not assimilate me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um, you know, I know there's different types of rays. They've been told that there are some that are more human, they're tall, some of the little short ones, which are more robotic. Um, but he said that, um, that uh, there have been many people that have been killed over the years, I guess in 19... Since 1938, over 200 aircraft have been downed by UFO hostilities and thousands of soldiers in all kinds of different actions with the aliens. But um, <clears throat> what's really interesting is um, a lot of, there's been several hundred thousand civilians who have disappeared without a trace. And it's still going on. You know, these people just vanish. And I don't know if you've listened to Coast to Coast lately about all these people that have vanished in national forests without a trace, which is pretty spooky. You know, yeah. Is it, yeah, we tried to did, get that guy on the show, but he never got did back you? to us. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Um, so what's going on there? And another thing, the aliens refer to us as containers which might be that our souls are, you know, and our bodies are the containers. And that's the reason for the experiments. Um, who knows? What are they doing with our souls? I don't know. But, you know, it's, I think there's been many people that have been abducted and experimented on. And we know that um, a lot of women claim that they've been pregnant and suddenly lose the fetus. And, and then they're shown the hybrid baby years later which is interesting. And, you know, so many times the stories that they're told is our earth is dying, um, the human race is dying, and that's why they're creating the hybrid, hybrid race. Um, and also that um, they're here for a special, you know, mission, that they're the chosen ones. Isn't that funny? They're always told that, you know, and I wonder sometimes, are we being lied to and hoodwinked by these aliens? Yeah, they sell on people on that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're special. So just go ahead yeah. and take the microchip, do everything we tell you because you've been groomed right. for this. Right, right. And, you know, I didn't realize this. I, I actually investigated the cattle mutilations during the 70s and early 80s oh, yeah. in Idaho. Yeah. And what's really interesting is that John Lear mentioned that there were human mutilations going on. And I did find a case, uh, which is on the Internet, that happened in Brazil. This body was found near a reservoir in Brazil. 
and the body was so mutilated. Um, it looked like, you know, that there were core samples taken out of the chest, which looked like laser, uh, some kind of laser instrument that removed these, you know, parts of the body. Um, the eye is just like, you know, the cattle mutilations, a part of the jaw, uh, part of the ear, there was part of the rectum. I mean, it was just a horrible. And according to you ever the heard the saying, "Hot dogs are made with lips and assholes." Oh, geez, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> the extraterrestrial <laughs> hot dog. It's not that's, kosher, but it tastes that's good. Right. That's right. Don't eat it. Don't eat it. You no pork know. product involved. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Rex. But you know. It, it, that's kind of scary, but I don't think that's going on. I think it's happened a few times, but I think it's, you know, the cattle mutilations have kind of slowed down and they, they claim that the abductions aren't going on like they used to. And I don't think they are. And why? That's kind of interesting. Who knows? I mean, maybe they've got other alternatives or options now. The technology, like you said, who knows how far the advancements have been even here at home, let alone. I, I mean, if we can come up with technology, you look at over the past hundred years where we've gone with tech. Mm -hmm. Now, where are these guys going in a hundred years? How much can they yeah. create in that same amount of time? Yeah. I'm sure it's exponential. So, you know, another thing I wanted to jump into is your other book that you have on your website, BetsyLewis.com, Predictions 2016. Oh, oh, you would, and wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. This is the Leak Project. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, uh, what's your question? Well, what are some predictions? Let's get into this for a minute. Uh, Where are okay. we going? What's the future of America? Well, I think, you know, there's 7.8 million people, on billion people on the earth. And, you know, we are using up all our natural resources. I mean, it's our oceans are becoming totally toxic and polluted. Plastics and radiation and oil spills and and our water everywhere. Uh, water is disappearing. We're, we're going into, um, you know, global warming. I know a lot of people say it's not true, but <laughs> it is true. Um, with droughts, we're seeing that. With the fires in the West Coast, um, we're, we're getting strange weather all over the world. I think that if we don't change things really quick and start honoring Mother Earth, that we're not going to have an Earth. Um, I think Mars is a good example of what may have happened to a civilization who didn't take care of their planet. And now it's just a barren place without any life. And I think that's a good lesson for us because we can destroy our Earth with nuclear weapons, with, with everything that we're doing, the chemtrails that are going on out there. Um, I think that's probably increasing the global warming Oh, yeah. And, I mean, yeah. you know, let's I want to jump into the chemtrails here for a minute, because when I went out to the McDonald's Observatory in Fort Davis, Texas, gorgeous out there, by the way, if, if you haven't been or those that are listening to this podcast, I'd strongly recommend going. And I had a chance to talk to somebody that works there. I think he's in customer relations. You can watch the interview on leakproject.com. And I asked him about Nibiru. I asked him about chemtrails. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he, very nice guy, and he mentioned that in that specific area, he called it contrails. He, he didn't admit to chemtrails, which is fine. And, uh, you know, totally right on, <laughs> real nice guy. He goes, well, there's no contrails around this area mm -hmm. because this is a no-fly zone over this observatory. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you, the sun does look different out there than it does in places that are heavily chemtrailed. Like if you're in Mesa, Arizona, Phoenix, or Los Angeles, the chemtrails in the sky, the checkerboard patterns, I mean, they're just they're chem dumps to the extreme to block right. out certain things or whatever they're doing right. i don't know but i've noticed that there's a difference with the chemtrails like depending on what the sun looks like it makes it a lot more intense mm -hmm. and extreme mm -hmm. in places with chemtrails yeah um i've been watching the chemtrails since the mid 90s and photographing them and you know a lot of times you'll see what looks like a dark shadow uh, form on the side and of course you'll have a perfectly clear morning and by afternoon the, the sky was totally filled with these chemtrails and a lot of times I've seen these it's kind of like oil on water you look up uh, at the clouds or something and you'll see this kind of weird rainbow it's just like you see with oil on water um, kind of a little rainbow in there but um, yeah, I, I think there's something going on. And I, I was in Belize during the 90s twice, and I don't remember seeing one chemtrail 
in that area, which is interesting. But I know that I've lived in Arizona, I've lived in California and Florida, and I, you know, I know that these chemtrails are just all over and they're so heavy at times. Um, it seems like before a weather front goes through that they set down the chemtrails really heavy. So I think they're controlling our weather, geoengineering. I really do. Oh, I mean, if you type in weather manipulation on Google, one of the first sites that comes up is a company that actually does weather manipulation. That's how they make money. It's a corporation, mm -hmm. and it's not a conspiracy anymore. So it's definitely tangible. Now, when you look at this being an election year, did you make a prediction on who's going to win? Well, I, I've talked about it being the year of the monkey, the monkey mind, and <clears throat> the monkey changes its mind all the time. So we could see some very strange things happen within the next few months, too. Um, Hillary, I don't know. I just can't see her being president, and I'm not sure about Trump either. I, you know, I felt that when Trump met with Bill Clinton before he decided to throw his hat in the race, that there was some agreement that they made that he would help Hillary win, you know, with all the things he says. I, I've listened to him years ago and how polite he was and so intelligent in interviews. And now he's so bombastic and he says the weirdest things. It's kind of like he wants her to win. Am I not wrong? <laughs> Are you talking about like, Trump actually helping Hillary behind the scenes? Yes. Yeah, I've yes. been talking about this now for months. I feel like yeah. Trump's very exciting to watch. I mean, he's certainly got mm -hmm. the entertainment factor, but it seems as if, in my opinion, these politicians for the most part are they're actors they're stage mm -hmm. players right. and the whole world can be a stage and i've seen pictures of bill hillary and donald hanging out together uh, putting their arms around each other all happy right. and, yeah. and then you watch films or not films but series like um, house of cards with kevin spacey and yeah. the way the way that they pull <laughs> these things and events it's like this wwe event and they're having mm -hmm. fun behind the scenes together Oh, I think so. I agree with you, Rex, 100%. It's wag the dog. And so many of these events that we see, I think, are created. You know, they're, we're just lied to all the time about things. You know, what is real? It's a good just question. Don't know. It's, a, <laughs> yeah. it's a really good question. I'm still trying to find out what is real because every time I think I've got it figured out, I realize I don't. Do you get a lot of pushback from people that you know, or are most people pretty open to this? Um, well, I've, I've had mixed, um, mostly on YouTube, you know, I get the trolls out there that <laughs> attack me, you know, it's, it's always something, um, my voice, um, I have allergies, I have asthma, some days I have, you know, a, a rough voice, and I get attacked about that, I, you know, some people I think that I'm totally out there, and that's fine, you know, I'm just offering my hypothesis and, uh, on different subjects, and I'm not saying that it's the honest to God truth, I think that it's got some possibilities. I'm trying to connect the dots, and I think the dots are well connected. And that's what I, I want people to open up their minds. I mean, we stay in these little boxes, you know, we're afraid to get out of these boxes um, that we've put ourselves in. And to realize what's really going on with our planet, I think there's just so many layers. It's like an onion, you know, you keep peeling off the layers, and there's another layer. <laughs> There's just so much to our world that we don't know about. And I think there are people that are controlling us, including the aliens. Um, we've been controlled for eons, and it's time that we awaken to the truth of what's going on. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the end of the Men in Black movie, the first one, where they're, they go and open up this door in this underground base, and that door opens up to a bigger world, and that world opens up to a bigger world and a bigger world. So it's, like you said, this onion layer that we're in. It's, it's quite remarkable, and the more you peel these layers, the more fascinating it becomes, yet the more dangerous it can become mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> Um, that's true. That's true. Uh, you know, I've got to say, Rex, you know, I really admire your show and that you're so polite to your guests. I've been on some shows where people attack you. I mean, and that's their whole thing. They want to attack you. I, I don't mind people disagreeing, but this is out and out attacks, you know, on, on what your religion is or, you know, that, that they're Christians and you're not or something. You know, I don't know what their problem is, but, uh, you know, it's sad because we're all part of God. God's children, I believe. We were all created, reptilians, aliens, we were all created by one source, I believe. Right.
I would agree. There's that connection at some level if you believe in the quantum mm -hmm. physics, quantum entanglement. It's kind of as mm -hmm. if we're all single droplets in a giant ocean, and it's great to embrace our individuality, yet at the same time, it's also great to appreciate somebody else's opinions. And it's funny because there's so many times I read comments where somebody will say, oh, well, this guest had me until this or until that. Well, if everybody was right 100% of the time, or if even one person in the world is right 100% of the time, I want to be best friends with that person. I mean, can you think of somebody that's always right? I no. can't. I can't either. I, I Even famous psychics haven't been right. Edgar Cayce got a lot of things wrong. He got a lot of things right, too, but nobody's 100% correct. And, if and we I were, know I'm not. <laughs> yeah, and if we were all the same, wouldn't that be quite boring? That would literally be like a cyborg society. It would be kind of sad if everybody had the same religious beliefs, political beliefs. It's mm -hmm. good to have differences, yet don't tread on me, and I won't tread on you. It, it's, you know, we got to have that balance as well. Yeah, all here, and, and um, I think we should honor each other because we all have a right to be here. Uh, nobody is, uh, should be separated or, you know, for their sexual preference, for their religion, for the color. I mean, we're, we're here together. Let's stick together and clean up the earth. Let's work together to create a, a new world of peace and quit hating and fighting each other. It's such a waste. It's a no-win situation. It really is. And even if you look at, some people feel that the time we're in now is closer to the end times, such as discussed in Revelation, because there's mm -hmm. certain parables in there that you could say, well, mm -hmm. that's happening now. For example, the first one I want to mention is the uh, rumor of wars and constant wars, because we've been seeing that mm -hmm. now for years. Yet at the same time, I, if you look throughout history, hasn't it always been that way, at least through modern history? Yeah, yeah. And whoever created us, um, I, you know, when I say whoever created us, I think that in the beginning we were all created by God. We were, we were spirits, became souls, and then we went out. You know, it's kind of the belief that Edgar Casey talked about when he was in a trance state, and he talked about that we went out and became physical forms. Um, we, um, a lot of, of the souls hovered over Earth when it was still becoming Earth um, and being terraformed and everything, and actually. Actually, some of the souls jumped into the monstrosities that were on Earth, the dinosaurs, uh, which is kind of interesting. But so we, we are all really one. We're all connected to everything, to the Earth, to the animals. You know, it, I, I've written a book called Earth Energy, which I want people to get back to ancient wisdom about honoring our planet because it's a sentient being and everything is alive. Um, we, we forget that everything is alive. Everything has intelligence. Everything um, is just a, a part of everything else. And um, once we remove one thing, something else goes wrong. And we found that out many times when we destroy a species, you know, it, it causes this whole um, domino theory. Um, things just start breaking down, and we've done that many times. We're destroying the oceans um, with the bleaching of the coral reefs and uh, just incredible things. So w once we get back into honoring Earth like Native Americans, you know, they talk to the trees, they talk to the animals, they know everything is alive. And that's something that we've forgotten. We're, we're so in tune to all our um, <clears throat> our gadgets and everything, electrical gadgets and um, our cell phones and and um, texting that we forgot that there's a natural world around us. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And the natural world around us is so much more incredible than anything you can get inside of a virtual reality computer system, no matter how amazing that can be. And it's fun to have the option to bounce into that once in a while, yet if you can completely plug in to the matrix and you can't unplug that's when it's literally like the movie where you turn into the battery for the machine and you know I gotta say too I look back I'm 38 I go back 30 years when the Nintendo first came out or about 30 years ago and I started playing those video games and my mind I literally saw these video games in the future of being similar to what the PlayStation 4 is now just the graphics being amazing being able to be more interactive with your environment mm -hmm. and then when the virtual reality stuff started coming out many years ago uh, a friend of mine that actually worked with some I guess you could say not really government stuff, but classified type stuff or a corporation for whatever he was doing, VR stuff. And I asked him a lot about it. And he, the only thing he could tell me was, it's some strange stuff, dude. He wouldn't tell me exactly what it was, but I could tell that it was, mm. it was pretty awesome. And I would see 
the future being this system where most people are plugging in and doing their daily activities in this virtual mm -hmm. reality type matrix where it's kind of like right. that movie Surrogate where all you have to do is sit in your couch and be force-fed Diet Coke and, and genetically modified nachos with some phenylalanolonics uh, gum to chew on with neurotoxins in it. But <laughs> you'll be okay because you're plugged in and even though you're 450 pounds and on pharmaceutical drugs just to keep your organs uh, alive before they completely burn them out and destroy them, you can do whatever you want in this virtual reality world. And now this pushing of microchips society everybody's got their cell phone on them constantly if you're standing for more than 30 seconds you have to pull up what's on your facebook otherwise you feel awkward they're pushing this society into right. a transhuman movement so i can see maybe 20 years from now there really could be this surrogate type society i think so rex i you know i, I it makes me so sad to see that people don't interact anywhere with each other they don't even know how i mean the kids out there uh texting they don't even know how to write you know when you think about what they were doing in the 17 1800s the way they wrote beautiful letters i mean <laughs> articulate and just you know it flowed and beautiful and now they can, so many of them can't even spell <laughs> they don't even know how to spell but we've just lost our humanness we have and and that's so sad where we're going um and the children of the world i you know i just hate to see what is going to happen to them because they're living in a toxic world where everything is dying and you know they're <laughs> they're mind controlled with all the violence on tv and you know the video games and everything else is violence 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 they're they're being told to to go out there and harm other people and animals and everything it's you know it's it's insane it's an insane world it really is well, it's right now, it seems as if the overall archetype of these global leaders that think they're gods almost, or the, I guess you could say, gatekeepers, they feed off of this dark ecstasy. Uh, you look at the pharmaceutical companies and the the big conglomerates that control a lot of the food supply that goes into mm -hmm. people's shelves and refrigerators, the, mm -hmm. the, the companies that control most of the meat and factory farming. It's not really designed for balance. It's designed for consumerism. Take, 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 profit, profit, profit. And don't get me wrong, right. profit's a good thing. It, it's great to be able to make money and live in a society like this. It's, it's what you do with that money that really counts. So, right. like, you know, I mean, your work that you come up with, you charge very little for the books. And for right. people to go to your website and pick them up, it's not like you're going to get rich doing this. This is more for the people than it is for your pocketbook. That's right. That's right. Exactly. You know, I, I have um, an Earth News One blog on my website that I give all the different things, predictions of earthquakes and, and if the sun is doing anything, UFO type things, just any paranormal type things going on in the world. And, and uh, I never charge. I know some websites, you know, you have to sign up and charge, you know, they charge a certain amount. Um, I just want to keep it free for people. I really do. And, and keep the cost of my books down too. That's I think great. that's important. Yeah. But yeah, you're so right about our world, um, and I just hope I just hope that something changes that, and maybe it it's going to take something horrific to change us to get us back to where we are. Because you know, people turn into heroes, most of them, not all of them, but people come out and help each other. You see these fires and these floods, and all of a sudden there's people helping each other. Um, they're getting back to interacting with each other. And maybe it's going to take something big like that. It's happened throughout, you know, our historical world. Um, there has been huge um, megalithic things that have happened, floods um, in our world. Um, who knows? There, you know, there's even ancient, um, maybe a atomic or nuclear wars that happened. Um, you can find green glass, this weird green glass that is found all over the world. And it was first found in 1945 in the New Mexico desert, which is kind of interesting. Have you ever heard of it? I, not the one in New Mexico, but I have heard of some yeah. of those deserts that have that greenish colored tint glass that's probably from a nuclear type mm -hmm. blast. Right. And it was first found in 1945 um, after we started uh, testing the atomic bomb in New Mexico. And it's found all over the world. And what's really interesting is that uh, there are no volcanoes. There's no meteor craters to explain it. There's really nothing to explain, explain it except uh, atomic nuclear type 
you know, weapons or bombs that went off during that time, ancient times. And of course, you know, when you get into the the ancient um, Indian text that tells about nuclear wars that were going on between maybe aliens and humans, um, who knows? But there are many stories that go way back. So yeah. maybe that well, they say there's nothing new under the sun. That might be true, Rex. <laughs> it's certainly new. cyclical. <laughs> yes, it is. <sighs> you know, and one thing I just want to say before we close out tonight is I've actually been to Dulce a couple of times. And I Have had, you? oh, yeah. And I went up about two thirds of the way up the Archuleta Mesa one day because I had a chance to meet somebody that lives out there. And he gave me a tour. I wish I could have made it up to the top. Unfortunately, I didn't have a spare tire that I felt was fit for that trip. And if I was to get a flat in that area, it was it was pretty off road intense so we made it about two-thirds of the way up and I met a lot of the locals out there every local that I talked to said that one point in their life they had seen some type of anomaly light UFO type thing out there and another thing that I find interesting is after that show and I, I at the very end of it I put rest in peace uh, Phil Schneider right there was somebody that left me an anonymous email that said that they did a whole bunch of research into that Phil Schneider video about him coming out saying that he got into a battle with ETs and got his fingers blown off and stuff like that underground right right well, he says, you know, and I can't verify this, but this email said that this person did a whole bunch of research into Phil and that Phil was actually into self-mutilation and that he did it himself and he never worked for the underground, he never worked for those companies that he claimed to and a whole bunch of other stuff. So now if that's true, uh -huh. if that's true, then wow, it's amazing what the internet can do. If it isn't true, how spooky is that that somebody would actually leave me an email trying to divert attention saying that they met the family members and did research for years about it and that was just a complete staged psyop event that Phil came up with in his own mind. And you're breaking up again on us as we're talking about this important subject. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? No, it, it's just bouncing in and out. Uh, and my Skype connection, it's shown that I'm not even connected to the Internet again. This is like the 12th time today that I've been disconnected on the Internet while I'm talking on Skype. But fortunately, the Skype call has been staying connected. But I, I talk again. Let's see if we can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Barely, yeah. Barely. Okay, yeah. We might have to end it a little earlier here. Okay. Well, yeah, that's fine. You were just making a comment um, to close out tonight. I made that about, talked a little bit about Phil and the possibility of what he said on those YouTube interviews not being real. And then we started getting weird Skype disconnect again. I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, you know, he died under mysterious circumstances, which kind of makes you wonder if, if everything that the people say about him that was they say he was a fake uh, would probably be you know, just uh, to disclaim him, um, you know, that he wasn't real. But, um, you know, his death was really weird. And his wife said that there's just no way he would have killed himself, committed suicide. And uh, to hang yourself like that, there is some kind of, um, I don't know what it was used. I'll have to look that up again. It wasn't a rope, but it was something kind of strange. A tubing of some kind that was found around his neck. Okay, I hadn't heard of that, so that would certainly yeah. add to the speculation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty weird stuff. But, um, yeah, there's so many, many things that we don't know about out there that is kept from us. And I, I think a lot of that is on purpose, Rex. I think they want us to be in the dark, you know, all this top secret. But just think, if aliens aren't aliens, but many of them are terrestrial beings, that would be a good reason why we just don't you know they don't want us to know which could change our our whole history our whole um religious views perhaps it would be the group probably consciousness. earth shaking yeah yeah that's incredible and and certainly the things that are going on today the stuff that you experienced many years ago it's just like something out of x files outer limits twilight zone it certainly is incredible and i really appreciate you coming on the show here with us tonight betsy thank you so much Oh, well, thank you, Rex. It's an honor to be on your show. And it's an honor to speak with you. And once again, folks, and check out BetsyLewis.com. You've got access to the Ancient Serpent Gods, which is coming out June 30th. So in just a couple of days, we've got Predictions 2016 and Beyond. Earth. Energy, Angels, Aliens, and Prophecy 2. Aliens, Angels, and Prophecies 1, Communicating with the Other Side, Mystic Revelations of 13, and several other books available on BetsyLewis.com.
LeapProject.com. Also, check out LeapProject.com. If you subscribe and become a member exclusively on Leap Project, you will have access to content not available anywhere else. Subscribe at YouTube.com slash Clandestine Time Lord. Stay safe and be the change you want to see. This is Rex Bear. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leap Project. I'm your host, Rex Bear, and we have guest Betsy Lewis with us. She is the author of several incredible books on the ET phenomenon, and one coming out here very shortly called Ancient Serpent Gods, The Alien Connection to Reptilian Dinosaurs will actually be discussed here today first, and that's coming out here very soon. If you'd like to know more about Betsy and her books, make sure to go to BetsyLewis.com. Betsy, hey, thanks a lot for joining us here at The Leak Project. How the heck are oh, you? Thank- well, I'm great. How are you, Rex? Great to be on your show again. Thank you. Absolutely. I know we spoke a couple years ago when I was with uh, another outfit, and this right. is, it's just great to have you here. And when we spoke before, you said some things that just blew my mind, and our listeners... Oh as well. So this is going to be fantastic. I know you've had some personal experiences and the fact that you've put together several really good books. I just can't wait to hear about the Serpent God connection. And one thing I just wanted to say real quick before we get to know a little bit about you as far as the audience that hasn't heard much about you before is I've wondered in the past about dinosaurs and the reptilians that we hear about so much. I thought to myself, could they have always been here, like a, a certain size reptilian, and then the dinosaurs mainly died off, but they were a part of the same family line. Did they evolve? Were they manipulated? But there's mm-hmm. just been this weird thing I've been trying to connect for so many years. So tell us a little bit about yourself, and then let's jump into the ancient serpent gods. Okay. Um, well, I've had lots of paranormal experiences since I was eight months old. A UFO experience uh, when I was eight months old with my parents on a lonely, dark road in northern Idaho. And um, they were buzzed by a UFO, may have been abducted because we lost um, two hours in time that couldn't be accounted for. I have had a UFO experience when I was in first grade and I was chased home by a UFO, a huge, giant, silvery disc. I have um, had many um, psychic and uh, precognitive uh, visions of the future um, which have come true um, I have had connections with the other side I've just had many many things happen and I, I don't know why I, I think I may have inherited all that from my mother who was very intuitive and could actually astral project I wish I could do that <laughs> but um, I haven't been able to do that but she was amazing you know I actually had an out-of-body experience the first time when I wasn't even trying to I was just falling asleep but I was mentally still awake and I, mm-hmm. when I popped out of my body it scared me so bad I woke myself up really quick and then I did it again and it freaked me out again so I woke myself back up and <laughs> ever since then I've been fascinated with it and I've researched it studied it I've done my best to practice certain exercises to help boost those abilities and it's mm-hmm. incredible I mean if you ever have that experience I would definitely say there's nothing like it it's incredible I had, I think, an experience like that when I was 13, and it happened so fast, kind of like you said, you were just in your body, and then suddenly, you know, you're up looking down at your body, and it happened so quickly, but I've never had anything happen since then. Yeah, it's pretty intense. It wasn't something Mm -hmm. that I was trying for the first time. Now, when you said you've made contact with the other side, what do you mean by that? Well, um, I have had um, family members who have passed on who contact me all the time, either through dreams or um, my sister who passed away in 2003 in Argentina has been doing all kinds of things. She, he's, she's a little bit mischievous. Uh, she likes to do turn off radios. She um, has um, actually started my alarm on my car. Uh, she set it off one day. Um, she has um, caused utensils to elevate in our kitchen. And uh, she's kind of sent little messages with uh, certain songs that she, um, when she turns off the radio, I know it's her. So it's pretty incredible. Um, and I've had dreams about her visiting. So there's just been some amazing things, so that I know um, are true that she's here and watching over us. Have you ever seen a reptilian? No, but I have friends that have that shapeshifters, actually, that, you know, the people that their eyes actually become slit and uh, pretty intense. Ah, yeah, let's talk about yeah. that. That's incredible. 
Yeah. Well, uh, like you, I've always thought, you know, everybody is on this roll about ancient aliens, right? Or ancient astronauts. <clears throat> and that started with probably Eric von Donneken's chariot chariots of the gods in 1968 but um you know there's it seems like every author out there in tv documentaries it's all about ancient aliens right and i thought well you know how can we say that it's really ancient aliens that helped us build these megalithic structures around the world and and account for everything that is you know the pyramids the great pyramids there's just too many things that don't make sense and one thing I found, which, you know, there's just this pattern, there's this connection that there are cultures, ancient cultures all around the world that have worshipped serpent gods since, you know, eons ago. Uh, it's even found in the Bible with um, Adam and Eve. So there's something to that. And, you know, we know the lowly, you know, snake. Why would they want to worship a snake? You know, obviously, I think that has something to do with dinosaurs. And, and there's some really interesting things that I've found about the dinosaur and other theories that people have had about the dinosaur didn't actually die out. And that perhaps a certain species of dinosaur actually survived the extinction event 65 million years ago, which, you know, I think is pretty interesting, isn't it? So do you think they went inside the Earth or had some way to live out the event that killed most of the dinosaurs or i think so um they had they were on the earth let's say between 150 to 185 million years that's a long time to evolve <laughs> and become super intelligent and the one thing that's really interesting is that paleontologists used to believe they were slow moving <clears throat> excuse me slow moving they were unintelligent you know they um didn't, um, you know, they were cold blooded, but now they're thinking that maybe they were warm blooded, maybe some of them were mammals, and they were very intelligent. So, yeah, I think they could have survived and gone underground. And that could maybe account for what we um, hear about all these alien abductions with reptilians and, and how they seem to go underground. Some people feel that they've been taken to an underground base or somewhere in the ocean some kind of base and and you know about the one that they found off of malibu we don't know if that's really a an alien base or what it is off the coast of malibu oh, i haven't even heard of that oh you haven't oh my gosh yeah um they have uh satellite images of it it's massive and there's 